Yesterday we made some 4x4s. They look really nice. Take a look at them. Came out really nice and straight. Just taking it nice and slow with the saw. But the problem is we were cleaning up and Meg took the drill off of the saw. We don't have the hand crank thing. We use the drill after the modification of this piece that broke inside of here. The lead screw, we replaced it with a ball nut so it works a lot smoother now. But the problem is there's no friction and if nothing is holding that thing in place, the bandsaw, if it is left unlocked, will come crashing down. That's what happened here. I, I just went to move these logs and I realized that they were actually, the, the sawmill itself was actually sitting on them. As you can see it right there. So I was gonna hook up the drill and uh, get the cables tightened up. And I mean, it's easy. I just, I got my drill hooked up here and go in reverse makes it go up. So now I could just raise up the sawmill, very easy. And that thing books, look at it. All right, so I put it on high torque mode, which gives it the strength it needs and also the lower rotation. So, okay, we're, we're clear now. I could get those uh, logs out of the way. So guys, the problem is if I take that drill, if I take this drill off, like just unlock it and remove it, and this thing is unlocked, that will allow the, the bandsaw to just slip down and crash down. And that's not very safe. So what I wanna do, ultimately I wanna computerize this thing. I wanna put a CNC stepper motor here and I wanna con control it with like a small like handheld tablet. So that's gonna be coming and it's set up to do that. But first what I need to do is really figure out how to counterbalance the stress that's on these cables. So these cables right now have an amazing amount of stress on them right now and, and basically that drill is holding it. And that's why I got this ghetto uh, bungee cord here holding it in place so that drill doesn't like wind up spinning around on me. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld a gas strut here and here. I'll figure out, basically what I need to figure out is how much weight is put on this cable and this cable. So I figured they'd probably pretty much be the same. Uh, so I'm going to use, I, I bought this little like fishing scale where you could hang your, your catch on there. So what I'm going to do is rig this together so that it is going across like that and this, this cable is going to be pulling on the scale and I'll, I, I guess, match up the other side. I'll just add that length on with chain. You'll see what I'm going to do here in a minute, but that'll give me the number of pounds of tension that's on this cable here so when I buy my gas struts I could pretty much match it up to uh, you know balance everything out when there's tension on it. So you know those gas struts like on a hatchback or in the trunk of your car I'm gonna put one end here and the other end somewhere down here and that way when there is compression going on here it's going to release or counter back it's gonna counter effect that that pressure and push this arm this way. So basically you should be able to very effortless, effortlessly um, rotate this that the drill is connected to. And then that would allow me to add a stepper motor there and I could tell the computer go a direction, certain number of steps or the other direction, certain number of steps. And that would very accurately allow me to raise and lower this whole bandsaw system. All right, let's lower this all the way down. See, they're loose now because it's all the way down. Take these things off pretty easily now. So I'm gonna attach the scale and then, all right, let's not mess this up. This goes around here. I have a feeling these are different because that side of the sawmill comes up around this pulley and around this pulley and to here. So it's got one, two pulleys. And this one comes up, it goes one, two, three pulleys. So I bet you there's different forces on them. The more pulleys you add, the less. Uh, well, damn, you know what? That could be because the engine's on this side. Huh, didn't think of that. All right. So let's, uh, yeah, let's use this hook here. I'm gonna have to add some tension Okay, so basically what I need to do here, I need to add that much length 
on the chain. Okay, so the chain. I'll get my chain, I'll put the hook here, and one of the links around here. Let's see what we're at. 50 pounds already? Holy crap. Oh, no. I'm just gonna hold it like that. Let's see what it takes to... We're at 20... Damn! I noticed I had quite a bit of waste here laying around. A couple of boards here and there that I processed the log and I have a big, like that piece right there, that big piece is left over, okay? Um, I don't know, sometimes it just doesn't make sense to waste time on like one more board you can cut. So what I'm doing today, I'm just taking all those leftover slabs and I'm cutting two inches out of them. Like those are all two inch slabs that I've cut, various widths and lengths. And I got another one set up here. So I cut those two by fours and I left them underneath. So it's spacing them four inches off the deck. Now I could come with the, with the bandsaw and I can run the saw two inches up right there. And I can get another couple two by fours out of this guy. So I think by the end of this, I'm spending maybe an hour or so doing this. I might be able to get a good like dozen or so two by fours. Not too, not too, uh, oh, let's we'll start that again. Here's what I ended up with, just from stuff laying around in the yard. And try to, look at that. So, all right, we're getting down to the nitty gritty of our pine, but while I was at it with all this cleanup stuff, I also uh, found this guy at the bottom of the pile. Look at that walnut, isn't that beautiful? Good stuff. Oh, black walnut. Man. So I just uh, I just squared that thing off. That was extra from the rafters, which we never used. We're gonna save it for something else. Probably gonna make our dining room table out of black walnut. It's really pretty. Maybe even the butcher block. So that's it. That's all the cutting for today. Gonna go get these logs where they need to go, and I'm gonna go clean up because rain's coming. Hey girls, you want to show me your fort? Sure. Come on, Autumn. <laughs> oh, 
Look at these kids. I turned my back for a few minutes and they're building a fort. Let's see, guys. So it looks like you got a gate there. Why are these guarding it? Okay. All right, we got a. Um, well, the kids have found some interest in my scrap pile also. It's right over there. And they decided to come over here and build a little lean to structure, right, girls? Yep. You know why it's called a lean to? Why? Because it's leaning. All right, show me. Look at the club they made, all on their own. Where's the passcode? It says a key. Oh, you got a key? Oh, all right. Wow, you guys are uh, you guys are like sand people here. We're not sand or predators. people. Hey, my name's Luke. All right, this is cool, guys. Nice. We have some spacing. Very cool. Got a window back there. All right, that's what they do in their free time after school. And I, I guess this is your front porch with your chairs? Yeah. All right, you got your binoculars we for got, some bird that watching? Is, that is a driveway. Do you want to see? Sure. That's your driveway right there. Luke, you'll keep an eye out with bulldogs. I'm good. Ah, I'm okay. Daddy, I'm supposed to go. Go ahead. Oh boy, that's what Claire is doing. All right, that's your driveway. Awesome. See? Yeah. That's pretty perfect. Our two's guarding. You're the guard? Yeah. All right, all right guys, I'm gonna head in after cleaning up, okay? I gotta put the tractor away, put the wood away, put my tools away, and that's it. Rain's coming. Oh, hello, Carmen. Where'd you go? There you are. I like the hey, Maddie. You guys like the new ready? fort? Yeah. All right, proud of you guys for making that. John. What? Koopa what? Koopa what? Koopa la? Yep. Are you recording? Yep. That's right, folks. Koopa la. We're putting one on the shed. We always planned on it. We haven't talked about it. But now is the time yeah. for the cupola. Cupola, a little thing at the top of the roof. Cupola. And what goes on top of that, John? Our weather vane from Russia. We have a really cool weather vane. Yeah, we do. It's a trout. It is a trout. Yeah, it's nice and heavy. Let me use this one. Okay, four foot two. So we need eight foot four. Got a couple long pieces here. All right, so, a little history. I looked up what a cupola is. A cupola is meant to promote airflow through a barn. It comes in through the doors and whatever, and you have your livestock there, and then usually you have your hay above it, and it creates that draft, and it's in the center of the structure. It doesn't have a ridge vent. It would have that cupola in the middle. It would be directing all the air that's brought in and send it through the top of the roof, and it would be passing right through the hay, keeping it nice and fresh for the livestock. That's why I see them on barns all the time. They're decorative at this day and age, unless you're using it for a barn, but um, we always thought it was just a nice little accent. Add some charm. Add some charm, like me. This is what we got so far, this is layer one of the cupola. 
this is going to be siding all the way down. It's going to have like a little triangle thing, triangle there, and then it's going to go in and then come back up again. So we got to get more four by fours here on each corner. And then we're going to build another box like this one on top of that. And then, then I need to take a break and calculate the, uh, well, the mini rafters. Basically, I'm going to have a post here coming up and then I got to calculate the rafter lengths. But it's coming out good. is that thing up top that we've been talking about and building so here's where we are with it I think it looks pretty good we framed it into that 3d model took a look at it and uh, got an idea of how we wanted to build it before we uh, framed out anything so it was easy we got a cut sheet going and we got all the pieces up there and went together fairly quickly so that's nice because it's all the way up top and coming up and down would have been a pain so yeah I think it looks good and what I did, I reversed the direction of the roof because we got the gable roof on the shed itself this way, so I reversed it on the cupola. So yesterday, Meg and I started doing the, uh, the trim in the corners. We did the doorway. We did this top soffit area. So I'm buckling down and uh, trying to finish up the trim. So I have this side to do, which I'm going to start on here shortly. I got this whole gable wall to do. You can see I got a missing piece there and then all the battens. And all the battens come down this way and I still got to do the trim on the corners here. So that's where we are. Hopefully by next week's episode we'll see this thing all trimmed out. And uh, I got, you know, the other main thing I have to do is the fascia and the soffit. So, alright, she's looking good. Nice and sturdy. And, uh... Yeah, let us know how you like the cupola. I'm pretty happy with it. And we're going to put a nice weather vane on it. we got a nice little uh, trout weather vane for it. Okay. Almost, guys. This is just the shed. Jeez, imagine how long the house will take. <laughs> Alright, so i got a funny story. So, it's cutting the grass two days ago. It was raining, and we're trying to combat those ticks. So, I cut the grass... And then I finish up and I look at it and it looks like a bad haircut. Like there's a, there's a high side and there's a low side. So I immediately go inside and I start Googling how to level the deck on a ZT10 turn. And educate myself. Go out there. Go out to the, to the barn where the, where the mower is. And uh, found something very interesting. Let me show you. Girls. Alright, so here's the, uh, here's the zero turn. So... I go out there, well I come out here, 
and uh, you know I start looking at the deck and it's pretty simple you just have to you just have to adjust this screw here and raise this flap and look at the blades and everything else and then I just look a little bit to my left and see that you see that right see that <laughs> I got a flat tire I think I cut the lawn with a flat tire <laughs> so I got a chuckle out of it oh man so all right let's get this thing out of here try to get this fixed Why is this thing flat? Let's see it yet. Come on, there's got to be a nail or something. I gotta take it off and what is that? Ooh, that feels like something. Something stuck in there. This is debris. What the hell is that? Oh, you know what that is? That's my old plug. I think I plugged this before. That what happened? That might be what it is. I plugged this tire before. The first day I got the thing, I got a flat tire. Ran over something. Maybe I gotta replace that. All right, let's get this wheel off. How am I gonna do that? I don't have a jack. See that there? I think I just, uh, right here, I plugged this with one of those like tar filler upper kits. And uh, I don't know, maybe it's been failing or something. Well, we'll get it hosed off, look at it, and uh, Give it some air, see if it's leaking out of here. Maybe I'll just replace that tar, get some more life out of it. I'm actually gonna replace these tires. They slip too much. I mean, my terrain is, uh, you know, you still can't. It's pretty flat in the yard, but when you go up that way, which I'm gonna seed the leach field soon, when you go up that way, it's really steep and I don't wanna be sliding around. So I'm gonna probably get, not ag tires, I think I'm gonna get some, uh, what do you call it? Some ATV tires that have more grip because these things they're turf tires they're meant for like like subdivision homes and golf courses they're meant not to rip up the grass if I just wait for it to be you know decently dry I shouldn't have an issue I'm not that, that picky about the yard anyway so those will get upgraded but for now I gotta fix what I got Well, it's actually it feels like it's holding air. All right, what's the PSI rating here? Max inflation 10? Really? Holy cow. Two ply rating tubeless. I've never seen one that low. 10. Huh. Am I even reading that right? Max inflation, one zero. What in the world? Ten. That's ten. Is it leaking? Anything on the inside? Alright, I think 
we're going to go with the classic hose test. Maybe I just hit something and it let the air out. Not much air in there, so it can happen quick, I guess. Creek work I did? Mm -hmm. Did you get it yet? No. But yeah, let's get distracted. Been working on the creek, folks. Adding some rocks, getting a little pool action in there, somewhere for the dogs to get a drink. It's good water. Comes out of the mountain. It's cool. Yeah. And is it coming out over here? Keep an eye on this back right tire, huh? Okay. You cut the lawn with a flat tire? Yes. I mean, I, I can't really tell. No, that's what happened, John. I had a flat tire and mowed like two acres of grass with a flat tire. That's what you did. Hey, I know how to, I know how to um, level a deck now. That's good. When I need to do that, right guys? Right guys. <laughs> I put Maddie on the mower and we went for a little ride. I don't think she liked that too much. Did I? I'm sorry, honey. I didn't mean to scare you. All right, guys, got a new one. Looks a little bit heavier duty than this, this thing, huh? Look at this thing. What a piece of junk. Unless you're fishing for sunnies, don't buy this thing. Goodness gracious. Matter of fact, you know what? This is what you do with this thing. Ready? There you go. Okay, now, so this should be good for a couple hundred pounds at least. So we're gonna take the same approach. I'm gonna go put it on the sawmill and we're going to pair it up with this uh, advanced strap support system. You know, if this thing doesn't work out, I thought that I could use one of these ratchet straps instead. There's a few things that are that's about the length from here to there that it is from these S-hooks, so. All right, let's go get the sawmill up and uh, let's get the scale in place. And 74 pounds. How could that be right? Two hundred. No wonder the other one broke. Still, it's horrible. Okay, two seventy-four. Alright, let's do this again. 
All right, am I missing something here physics-wise? I, I don't understand how it can be that heavy. Well, let's measure the other side. Maybe I'll get a different reading on the other side. <laughs> balanced out at 173 that's the tension at this point on this wire 173 pounds huh and that the other one was 270 something now this one has the extra pulley I don't know not a physics pro that just seems like a lot to me. Hmm. That's just the tension. So, all right, I'll look for some really heavy duty shocks. I mean, if I got a resistance of, say I want to put shocks up here, some gas struts. I'm going to attach one here and one here, and it's going to, when basically it, actually when it contracts or compresses, the shocks are going to counteract it and push it back the other way, taking some stress off of this point here. I'm going to get a set of 100 pound struts, like 100 pounds each, and I'll mount them off center so if I needed to double up some struts, which I don't, I don't know, just the, from the weight of it and everything, I, I just don't feel like this thing is holding that much. I don't know. Huh. I was not expecting that result. 100 and, it is on pounds, right? Yeah, 173 pounds. Hey. And then 275. Literally scratching my head. Good job. Good job, Clara. I can do a hole in this. Uh, I can do it down? Uh, right here. Oh. Yay. Oh. Heavier than it looks. All right, everybody in. No splashing. So this is not a stock tank for livestock or Maddie. Obviously. Carmen. Okay, this is gonna be our little plunge pool. Oh yeah, I like the smooth edge on it. Uh huh. It's comfortable. Hi Carmen. Carmen would be underwater right now. Oh, thank you. You like it, don't you? Oh yes, yes. Oh, fill it up now, Daddy. Fill it up now. So yeah, we bought a. These things are basically big water bowls for livestock. And uh, it's eight feet in diameter and two feet deep. So it's plenty to get wet and plenty to fill the whole, or let the whole family get in here and have some fun. Um, but it's not just gonna be a pool. No. And we're not just going to put it on the ground like it is right now and stick a hose in it and fill it up. We're gonna actually, you know, complicate it. We uh, don't right do there. anything the easy way. Meg, why don't you get in and we could get a visual of how much space you have in the thing. No splashing mom, guys. Sit down. Have a drink. Oh, yeah. Nice? Yeah. So, Meg's legs are out. Here, I mean, you got plenty of room in there. Yeah. Plenty of room. Because uh, we used to have a hot tub in Myrtle Beach, and these kids were all up in your face all the time. They treated it like a swimming pool. So this is like a really nice size just a little, a little plunge pool. What do you guys think? You like my tripod I set up? Yeah, pretty expensive tripod. <laughs> anyway. Just got smoked. I don't know, is that supposed to come? What is that? I feel like there's something that goes here, maybe. I don't, I don't know. Hey. Oh, that's a tape measure. Look at, oh yeah, look at my big fish I caught. Wow, it goes to two feet. That's a big one. 
let's go cut some more stuff. All right, then come back up here. We're gonna cut these uh, these pieces. They come from the top here down to here. I call them the parallelograms. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Billy! Give me those parallelograms! <laughs> and they're gonna be angles, so that'll be fun. Yeah, we're good at those. Yeah. 